the next speaker that I'd like to introduce has become a great friend to me. And he, he is my co-host. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Nelson Beltajar. And he is our final speaker for this afternoon, for this evening. He's a certified life and executive branch coach, international speaker, physical therapist, and author of the Global Impact blog entitled www.thepositivedrip.com. He specializes in bridging the gap between awkwardness and uncertainty of adolescent on one end and personality, a personally productive adult on the other end. Entertainingly sharing information that traditional school conveniently forgot to teach us. Nelson lovingly will be, very, be the very first person to tell <clears throat> anyone without a shadow of a doubt that adversity truly introduces the person to themselves. Nelson's title of his the title of Nelson's speech is Attitude and Adversity. Nelson, thanks so much for coming on. Brother, it's your turn. Hey, hey hello, hello, everybody. It's me, Nelson Beltajar, coming to you live from Toronto, Canada. And today is a great day to be above ground, I tell you. First of all, Mike C, I want to thank you very much for that fantastic introduction. And I'm I am I'm thrilled to be here and share time with all of you and the viewers at home. But before I start, I have to let you and the whole planet know that I am an imperfect soldier for Christ. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here in front of you today. And now that I've said that, sit back, relax. I'm gonna tell you a story. But I want you to realize that ladies and gentlemen, youths, teenagers, and young adults, you're smart, you're strong, you're special. And you're in the right place at the right time. And now that we're all friends, can I ask you a question? I'm wondering, is there anyone out there who has ever had life hand you something that you didn't expect? If you answered yes, please put a heart in the comment section. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a sentence for you. A sentence that I've held close to my heart for years. And I want to share it with you. And it goes like this, gems, precious gems, can't be polished without friction, nor human beings without trials or tribulations. I'll say it again, gems, precious gems, can't be polished without friction, nor human beings without trials and tribulations. My friends, there's this word in the English language that'll be defined as a calamity or distress or misfortune. And the word I'm talking about is adversity, adversity. Adversity truly, truly will introduce a person to themselves. You see, I was lucky enough to build a thriving, thriving physical therapy practice that specialized in injury assessment, treatment, and rehabilitation. And I'll never forget this. It was May 2016. We were on the second floor of my studio loft. My team and I were celebrating, celebrating, clanging those champagne glasses clanging those champagne glasses, which were secretly filled with Diet Coke and ginger ale, <laughs> celebrating, celebrating, because we had reached this monumental goal. We were living the dream. We were on cloud nine. It was amazing. And then a week later, 168 hours from that special moment in time, I was shockingly diagnosed with cancer. And I was forced to be admitted into the hospital immediately for supervision, evaluation, and chemotherapy treatments. And to add salt to the wound, I even lost my ability to walk as a secondary complication. And I became a prisoner of a wheelchair for the next three years. As you can see, yes, I was battling cancer, but I also had this undying goal to graduate from that wheelchair into a walker and hopefully two canes and one cane and back on my feet walking alongside my friends and family once again. That was the hope and dream. The reason I share this story with you is to show you that adversity, adversity will attack you anytime it wants, regardless of your age, your sex, your gender, your religion. It will attack you. And when it does, and when it comes to when it comes to stare you right in the face, what will happen? Will you crumble or will you find a way to conquer it? My friends, as crazy as that 
dark chapter of a story I, I just shared with you is. That's not even the hard part. That was the easy part. In fact, lean in. Let me share this with you. In the years 2016 and 2017, I was forced to live in five different hospitals. Five. Five. I had to live in them 24-7. And my very first cancer doctor, my very, very first cancer doctor, let's call him Dr. K. Dr. K gave up on me. And he told my family that I was terminal and there was nothing he or the hospital could do for me. And he was going to transfer me to the palliative care unit so that way I could be comfortable and pain-free in my remaining days. When I heard that, it was like a sword had swooped right through it, cut me at the knees, and my life flashed before my eyes. And I wallowed, I wallowed in self-pity for maybe five or ten minutes. And then I promised myself, if I am going to die, if I am going to leave this planet, I'm going out on a bang. And I promised myself I'm going to chase one more goal, one more undying goal before I leave this planet, regardless if adversity had me by the ankles and they wanted to drag me down. And that one goal that I wanted to do before I left this planet was I wanted to write a blog, a blog, not for personal vanity. You see, at the time, I had a six-year-old nephew, a five and three-year-old niece. Two brand new born twins, which I knew that I wasn't going to get a chance to see grow up. And that broke my heart. So I wanted to create a blog that encompassed all my life nuggets, everything that I learned, my thoughts, my ideas. And I wanted to leave it behind for them. So that way I could still, so that way I could still be a part of their lives. After I had passed away. But you want to hear something funny? It looks like the joke's on me. Let's fast forward to 2018. One, my brand new cancer team, my brand new cancer medical doctors did everything they could to save my life. And they miraculously stamped me cancer free on September 28, 2018 and told me to go live my life. Ha ha ha, yeah. And two, that blog that I was leaving behind specifically for my younger family members, it has trickled across the planet and developed a global readership, which was never the plan, never the plan. And three, an online community is walking alongside that blog. It's, it's so humbling to think that people actually want to read what I have to say. But the reason I share this with you is not to brag. I share this with you to show you that adversity, adversity introduced me into a more stronger, more resilient me. Adversity pulled me away from the idea of faltering and told me I needed to fight. Adversity inspired one last undying goal for me to create that love-filled blog for my younger family members. Adversity even opened my brain to the possibilities of what I could do in my perceived remaining days instead of shutting it off. You know, instead of lying in that bed waiting for the, waiting for the coffin to arrive, I wrote that blog. People ask me, how did you get through this dark time? And I tell them, attitude is important. There will always be bad times. But your attitude is extremely your biggest ace in hand. It's not what happens to you. It's how you handle it. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that bad times are going to appear. But the question is, are you going to let it conquer you? Or are you going to conquer it? I want to talk to you, that person, specifically at the editor of this camera. I know that you're out there. I know there's someone out there that's felt inadequate, insignificant, alone, lonely, scared, invisible, isolated, unseen, and unsure. I know you're out there. You know how I know? Because I felt the same way once. In fact, every single person that you've met today on this panel and who spoke knows exactly how you feel. But the one common denominator about us who are on this side of the camera, we all chose to find a way to conquer adversity instead of fall prey to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am still cancer-free today. And you want to hear the, the cherry on the Sunday? On January 3rd, 2021, January 3rd, 2021, I took my cane and I put it in the closet forever forever because i am now 
walking upright on my own, again, alongside my friends and family. My friends, adversity is coming. There is no escaping it. But it's possible. It's possible to conquer adversity. It's how you and your attitude perceives adversity, which will determine how you will mentally and physically behave towards it. My friends, ha, the world, the world has been waiting for a person or persons who are foolish enough to believe in the impossible in order to push back, wrestle with, and eventually defeat adversity. And I honestly, honestly believe that that person or persons is you. Remember, gems, precious gems, can't be polished without friction, nor human beings without trials and tribulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nelson Beltajar, the proud son of the late great Mr. Gregorio Beltajar, who came from humble beginnings, who weathered life storms and was an example of dreams can come true. And my friends, for those of you listening, I cannot wait to hear your stories of victory. I'm Nelson Beltajar from Toronto, Canada. That's my time. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your day. Michael, back to you. Back to you, Michael. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. I, I can really appreciate your speech, brother. And you really just struck a nerve. <laughs>